ሰላም ጤና አስተሊን ተመልካቾቻችን ሰለሞ ሙልጌታ ካሳኔ ሳምንታዩ ቲክቶክ ሶልመን በኢቢኤስ ተጀምሯል ለዛሬ ይጀላቸው የምቀርበው ወጣት የቴክኖሎጂ ባለሙያ እንግዳ ነው ከሱ ጋራ የማደርገውን ቆይታ እንድትከታተሉ ጋብዛቸዋል ስሙ ሚካኤል ሲሳይ መንግስቱ ይባላል የተወልዶ ያደገው በዚህ በአሜሪካ ሀገር ሲሆን ኦሬገን በሚባለው ግዛት ውስጥ በመትገኘው የፖርትላንድ ከተማ ነው ሁለቱም ወላጆቹ እንግዲህ ቀደም ሲል ወደዚህ ሀገር ተሰደው የሚኖሩ ከነሱ ወላጆች የተወለደ ነው ትምርቱ እየተከታተለውም በዚህ ሆነው ከ ካንደኛ ክፍል ጀምሮ እስከ ሃይስኩል ትምርት ከፍተኛ ትምርቱን እየተማረው በተዋቂ በሆነው የቴክኖሎጂ ዩኒቨርሲቲ በተለይ በቴክኖሎጂ ዞሪያ የማሳቹሴትስ ኢንስቲትዩት ኦፍ ቴክኖሎጂ በዚያ ትምርቱን ተከታተሉ የመጀመሪያ ዲግሪውን በሳይንስ በኤሌክትሪካል ኢንጂነሪንግ እና በኮምፒውተር ሳይንስ ተቀብሏል በከፍተኛ ውጤት በአሁን ሰዓት በሲያትል ከተማ ውስጥ የሚኖረው ማይክል ለማይክሮሶፍት ኩባንያ በሶፍትዌር ኢንጂነሪንግነት ያገለገለ ይገኛል ከዚህ በተጨማሪ ማይክል እዚህ ሀገር ተወልዶ ቢያድግም ዋን ነው እንግዳይም እንዲሆን ያሰብኩበት ምክንያት ኢትዮጵያ ውስጥ ላሉት እኩያ ወጣት ወንድሞቹ ከፍተኛ የሆነ ልብ አለው ሸክም አለውና በዚህ የተነሳ ኢትዮጵያ የሄደ የኮምፒውተር ኮዲንግ ፕሮግራም እንዴት እንደሚጻፍ ለማስተማር እንቅስቀሳ ጀምሯል አዲስ ኮደር የሚባል ኢኒሼቲቭ አለ እንደውም እንግዳይ ዶክተር ጀላኒ የሚባል ከዚህ በፊት የሃርቫርድ ፕሮፌሰር አቅርብ ቢላሽ ነበር እሱ የሚመራው ኢኒሼቲቭ ነው በዛው ውስጥ በመታቀፍ ሄዶ ይሄንን እንግዲህ የኮምፒውተር ፕሮግራሚንግ በተለይ ደግሞ አልጎሪዝም እሱን ያስተማረ ነበረ ተመልሶ መጥቷል እንደገና በሚቀጥለው አመትም እንግዲህ ሄዶ ይሄንኑ ነገር ለወጣት ወንድሞቹ በኢትዮጵያ በአዲስ አበባ ለማስተማር እቅዱአለው ስለሱም ያጫውተናል እንግዲህ ማይክል ፈቃደኛ ሆነ እዚ ድረስ ለመጫወት ፈቃደኛ ስለሆን ካመሰግናለሁ አንድ ጥያቄ አንድ ነገር ልንገራችሁ ወደ ንግግራችሁ ከመያዳችሁ በፊት እንዳልኳችሁ ማይክል እዚ ተወልዶ ስለአደገ አማርኛ መስማት ነው እንጂ መናገር በጣም ያስቸግረዋል ስለዚህ በጣም ትንንሽ አማርኛ ሊናገር ይችላል በተረፈ ግን ኦሞስት እንዳለ እሱ መልሶ እኔ በአማርኛ ልጠይቆ ይችላልው እሱ ግን መልሱ ነው ያው በእንግሊዝኛ ይመልስልን እንደምንከታተለው በጽሞና ተስፋ ያረጋሉ። ቴንክ ዩ ማይክል ታንክ ዩ ታንክ ዩ አመሰግናለሁ አትልን እሺ በጣም አመሰግናለሁ ኦኬ እስቲ ወደ life with a professional life and academic life come with hatch benefit let's talk about your 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 childhood and how you grew up here so uh, as an ethiopian as an immigrant right mm-hmm. so what was your childhood like and in a religion that he never so my childhood was very average in a lot of ways i was born in portland oregon like you said uh, but one thing was it was just sort of me and my sister and my two parents and for us family was such a very big part of our life like just as a part of Ethiopian culture but seeing as how my parents immigrated to the US it was just us so there are all these family members that we've heard about and talked to on the phone but we can't exactly put faces to the names because we've lived our whole lives in the US but i mean really apart from that on the outside we lived very sort of average lives like playing baseball and basketball and soccer and going to neighborhood schools and such but there was always sort of an underlying sort of missing aspect of our lives being in the US and away from our extended family in Ethiopia. No, oh, that's great. Yeah, that's that's what every every immigrant is feeling about, right? Mm. So uh so what why did you decide to study computer science? እንግዲህ ተመልካቾቻችን ማወቅ እንፈልጉት ይሄን ነው ብዙ ጊዜ ሶፍትዌር መማር የሚፈልጉ ሰዎች ይሄን ማወቅ ይፈልጋሉና what was the motivation or you drive to 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 pursue mm-hmm. science specifically electrical engineering and computer science and then the other question is እንዴት አርገህ ነው MIT ውስጥ የገባው ከባ ነው ዘላ መግባት ጥሩ ትምርት ቤት ነውና እንዴት ነው ይሄን እስቲ ንገራ okay so One thing about computer science in our household was my dad was a programmer. So, I had always sort of been exposed to the idea of computer programming and computer science. He was always reading these huge programming books and always like working on the computer and I would ask him about his work and I remember very vividly the first day that he showed me how to sort of make a website with HTML because that was something I'd kind of been interested in and he just sat down with me and he showed me how I could take photos from my camera and upload them to the computer and make my own website and just like embed these photos that I've just taken onto like oh, my own website and for me that was sort of incredible. Since I'm in a bar, we did that. Oh, I must have been in like 8th grade. So, okay. Yeah, it, it it was a long time ago and and it was it was really interesting just to have that resource but one one other thing though that I really appreciated was it was present in our lives 
but my dad never really forced it upon me. He was never like, you should be a computer programmer. He was just sh sort of showing me its power and really sort of the, the interesting aspects of it. And for that, after that, I was really kind of hooked. Yes, exactly. Okay, that's wonderful. So how did you get into uh, MIT? So there's no real formula for getting into any sort of school. But for me, one thing that I've sort of figured out, I guess, is that the best way to sort of get into like these really good schools is not so much to sort of tailor like an application to getting into these schools or doing things that you think will get you into these schools. It's more just following a passion really, really strongly. So like for me, I was really into programming and I would to really learn programming what I did was I went online to the MIT OpenCourseWare and that is basically a huge resource filled with free classes and that's completely free for anyone absolutely okay if you can provide the link we will put it on the screen so that mm -hmm. people can can do the same thing computer programming mm -hmm. yeah okay. so I remember being in like 11th or 12th grade like in class like with my laptop while people are working on like classwork working on like programming assignments like just for fun and like i did like internships at portland state university learning how to program and i don't know this for certain but i'm sure that reflected very positively in my application just showing that i was doing these sort of things just out of uh passion really it was just sort of a hobby for me something that i thought was really interesting it's really like the power and scale of programming that kind of drew me to it. And just the fact that there are all these free resources online, like the MIT Open Courseware, that was really my first exposure to MIT as well. And so being able to have that resource in which I could find free courses and learn how to program is really what drew me to MIT as well. So it was sort of kind of a two bridge with one stone. I was able to learn beforehand, but also be exposed to MIT and that's sort of what drove my application. That's wonderful. So tell us about your Timurtiza, the Tamarcaoni, my general degree in the tagging, and then the bar with it of Fukuoka, and then the bar with Orozco. So MIT is a very interesting place. It is, while you're in it, it can, there's a saying that it feels like you're drinking from a fire hose. And that's just sort of meant to represent that there's so much information coming your way and so many things to do, it's really hard to sort of take it all in. But looking back, it was really probably like the best thing that had ever happened to me. It was such an incredible experience. There's just so many resources and opportunities there that there's just, you wish there were more hours in the day. You wish like you didn't have to sleep or eat just because there's so many things that you want to do and so many really, really incredible people that inspire you every day to do amazing things. Wonderful. What was your, your GPA when you finished uh, MIT? GPAs aren't really it's not important. important. I know, I but mean, you know, it's, it kind of reflects how, how you did well, I think, right? Yeah, I mean, so our GPAs are out of five, so I have a uh, four or five when I graduate. That's wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. So, so let's talk about your professional life, right? Because I mean, internship is about how to help you. I'm back on the internet. Microsoft and all that. So, and um, date What's how's work at Microsoft? Since last week, I've done that. Because in in relation to that. You know, as a, an MIT graduate, you could have, you know, chosen many other options, right? Maybe, I, I don't know, I'm just thinking out loud, like Google's or the Facebook or Apple. Mm -hmm. Why, if you chose Microsoft, why you chose that in-house work at Microsoft? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, one really great thing about MIT is that there are so many resources. And one of those things are really how they reach out to companies and how companies come to MIT to do recruiting. So virtually every tech company that you could even think of comes to the career fair and comes to the campus at some point to do recruiting. And so you really know about all these different opportunities. And for me, I actually did an internship with Microsoft uh, last summer. And so I really got a good experience there. I was able to learn a lot. The, the team that I work on is the ASP.NET Core team. And that is, uh, they work on a web framework and it's open source and cross-platform. And one really big thing for me was I learned so much that summer. And in addition to that, I felt that there was still a lot more left to learn if I were to come back. 
So that was a really big driving factor. But probably the most important thing was I really enjoyed working with those, those teammates. And that's a really big thing with starting a new job, especially in tech, is that the culture can vary drastically from company to company. And so getting that internship experience, I was able to really see what it was like there. If I were to just interview somewhere else and just take that job full time, it would be kind of a gamble. You can't really tell what it's like working at a place just from interviews. So the internship really gave me a good experience and a really keen insight onto what it was actually like to work on that team. And I really liked it. And another big thing is that it's in Seattle, which is pretty close to home. It's a three hour drive from Portland. To your parents? Mm, exactly. Okay, that's another reason. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what, what are, the, I mean, you mentioned some of the projects that you do there, ASP.NET, which I used to uh, code on when I was a mm. software engineer <laughs> before joining the consulting world. Um, so uh, what kind of projects did you do? Uh, while at Microsoft or in your, during your internship or personally? Mm -hmm. So any projects that you have done uh, from the scratch maybe or mm -hmm. enhanced? Yeah, so throughout my time at school, I participated in a lot of different internships and research projects. So like starting from like my freshman summer, I was part of an undergraduate research opportunity or Europe is what they're called at school. That was through the Space Systems Lab it was on a project called OSIRIS-REXIS. And essentially that project was about sending a payload on a NASA satellite to basically take information about a, a meteor that was sort of approaching the Earth. And that was a really good experience for me as a freshman. Uh, also, there were other opportunities, like I participated in an Android programming competition, and that really sort of was my first exposure to mobile programming. And that was a really interesting experience because you didn't really need any experience to join that competition. And from that, I was able to really learn a lot and that made me very marketable when I was applying to other jobs in the future. So like from that, I had to get different internships and that, that really sort of like spurred my career growth, like being able to put that on my resume, being able to like expand those skills. And that was basically mostly self-taught, which is how a lot of programming really is. And so like from there, I was able to get internships in like New York and Seattle at places like GroupMe and Redfin working on mobile applications. So it was just sort of like one of my friends sort of pushed me to join this programming competition for Android. And from that, like my next two jobs were in mobile programming, which kind of just shows how like a small decision can really affect the trajectory of your life as long as you just kind of put effort into it. Wonderful. Thank you, Mike. I'm going to talk to you about the first time I was in the United States. I'm going to talk to you about the first time I was in the United States. I'm going to talk to you about the first time I was in the United States. I'm going to talk to you about the first time I was in the United States. I'm going to talk to you about the first time I was in the United States. I'm going to talk to you about the first time I was in the United States. I'm going to talk to you about the first time All right, I want to catch you. Can I have a quick time to listen? I'll be much more than happy to listen. Mike, I'm going to be here to talk to you about the Ethiopia head of software engineer in the Mohonu program. This is the middle of the computer programming. But there are a lot of other things that are going to be done. But the top of it all, the top of it all, is the project that I head of. I discover a new ball in the city. I'm going to be more than just a teacher. I'm going to be more than just a teacher. I'm going to be more than just a teacher. Dr. Jelani, I'm going to be more than just a teacher. این گرایش هنوز کربن بره که زیادی بنا بره می آرف لای یه هاروارد پروفسور سیون گمشش تو پیوی گمشش تو کره آمریکا وینو انگلیس اگروپوس گپتونو بازه نگر سی سی سه تفک آیو بازی آمد هیره نبره هیره تمال سهال سو استی من در درک what was your main role as a as a as a team within our discorder and then what you what you thought what you thought and what you helped back home for the youngsters and how 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 the experience was yeah definitely so for I Discoder 2016, I was one of the TAs. And just as like a small background for about the program, it was a program designed to teach high schoolers, so primarily like 10th and 11th graders, uh, about algorithms through programming and the language Python. So it started off with like a two week introductory course in programming in Python. And then it moved towards using those programming skills to learn about and implement different algorithms. And so as a TA, before actually going to Ethiopia, we sort of set up practice problems and helped kind of design curriculum. And once we got to Ethiopia, we were 
in lectures ready to answer questions and helping run these sort of lab scenarios in which the students would work on the pre-assigned labs and we would go around and basically just kind of answer questions and really just help them with any of these algorithm questions that they had. Hmm. So that basically that you are just helping as a teaching assistant, right? Exactly. So many maslahal be Ethiopia lai science and technology la masadek to promote science and technology in Ethiopia. What did you observe to be the most important thing to 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 do about that back home? So, mm -hmm. so I think really, uh, especially with programming, it sort of just you need someone to essentially kind of just point you in the right direction. So like for me. It was really my dad who kind of just showed me that programming was this really interesting thing that you can kind of just learn about on your own. And so I think one thing that would kind of really need to happen is just uh, some sort of like tech mentorship in which you would essentially show the students or whoever was interested where the resources are and sort of how to do it on your own. Uh, like for the example of those students, they were very brilliant students and we were teaching them like concepts that like I learned in like university or like people like don't learn until like after high school, like pretty complicated things and they were picking them up and it was essentially they just needed someone to say, oh, like here are the different opportunities that are out there in tech and this is like what you should be learning about if you're interested in this stuff and they can go ahead and do it. But I think really you just need someone to sort of point you in the right direction and show you where the resources are. As awesome. long as you have a computer, mm. you can you can program. Wonderful. Yeah, the, some touch with that. This is a very important thing that he said. Well, Gazim Malono, and Gadot Chimga Saura, Barasim Saura, Ethiopia, yeah, Gubzinach Grad Lamial, Mike Seal and Desamachut, and Egana University, Gabiche, and Mamaron Kabar Conceptuch, Yastra Nyakful Nasra Nyakful Tamarioch, Auk out, figure out our goats, Cesar Rai Chalona Milo, and now Mendonomias Challenge you. Guide me a gacho, yemi kota kota cho, son of mias felgo, resource on a mias felgona. He bet am, but am, but am encouraging me a regamino. Gun and does the end of the Mugobas Tamaru Chialu, but your resource alamanum de mutinish yemias as the nemino. Selezi hulatum calicalona, it opios the gubsnach grill, what the Lujo Chachin hulachum, but am goes nach, bebzatana. Henegar must have a lebet resource sacr about mias felgonegar, macrava lebet, but am the smilnegarno. So uh, along with that, just uh, attached a uh, question. So in general, Mindano anti suggestion for Lawat Atamarioch. Of mm -hmm. course, you said mentorship and resources. Those are very important things. But Leila, uh, Batech Amari, specifically Koden Di Maru, Barasacho, Yasfel Legachuala Metro. And then after that, the more to get into professional career in computer science and electrical engineering. Mm -hmm. What is your suggestion in general? What's your advice to youngsters? Yeah, absolutely. So, one really important thing with coding is patience. Because Sometimes you can be working on something and you can be staring at it for hours and hours and it can look perfectly fine to you, but when you run it, you get the wrong result or something is broken. And it really sort of just takes the patience to like not get frustrated and to really pay attention to detail. Because if one, if one semicolon is out of place or you have one character off, like the computer won't understand what, it, what it's, you're trying to make it do. Computers are very dumb in that they can't figure out those sort of problems on their own but when you tell them what to do correctly they can do it incredibly fast and so it's so important for you as the programmer to have that really close uh, paying attention to detail in that sense so as a programmer you really sort of have to be very careful and be very patient and as far as getting into the profession it's really sort of about working on your own and working on sort of personal projects and sort of trying to mix something that you're maybe passionate about outside of science and technology and trying to use programming or electrical engineering to sort of enhance something that you m might think is could be more efficient, right? Mm -hmm. So it's about sort of using computer science as a tool to improve life in some other way. <laughs> And then aside from that, do you have any recommendations or suggestions as far as like tools or resources that you can think of 
that can help them, uh, you know, improve and then uh, enhance what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like I mentioned earlier, there's the MIT Open Courseware. So those courses are a little bit more advanced and they're like hour long lecture formats and like homework that they actually give out at MIT. So there are other sort of, I guess, slower introductions to programming. So websites like Code Academy or like Khan Academy, Udacity. So there, there are lots of different All resources. Of them free? Yeah. Okay. And so honestly, if you just Google like how to code or like coding lessons free, there's so many results. And like additionally, people can email me if they want to get more resources. I can that would be fantastic point if you're willing. Right you can you know uh, you know you can put that, and then you can I know you're gonna get a lot of emails. But uh, <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> so, but thank you so much for being willing for that. Uh, so. While you were traveling there, even though you went there for for uh, assisting, you know your brothers out there and sisters on a personal level, what was your experience? First of all, Hamajam magazine Was this uh, your first time? This was actually my third time. So, so in general, whenever you travel to Ethiopia, what's your experience? The good, the bad, and the ugly, maybe. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I think one really sort of big thing for me about going back to Ethiopia that is sort of hard to wrap my head around is going to a place where everyone sort of looks like me and sort of being surrounded by the my culture at home but everywhere. So that's awesome? Yeah, no, it's fantastic. <laughs> it's okay. fantastic. It's it's such a surreal experience to be like born in the US and Oregon, a place that's not incredibly diverse, and to go to Ethiopia and to be around all like my family members and just to be surrounded by other Ethiopians. Like, like I said, growing up, it's just me, my sister, and then my mom and my dad. And we have sort of extended like family, like the relatives, like just family friends, really. Yeah. But to actually go to Ethiopia and really be with like, oh, this is like my mom's brother, and this is like my dad's sister, and so on and so forth. It's, it's really sort of an incredible experience for me. The most sort of powerful experience that I had was the first time I actually went to Ethiopia. And when I actually got to the airport. So I was traveling there on my own. So it's just me, I had never been. And when I get to the airport to basically see this like huge group of like probably 45 people all with like flowers, like waiting for me to, to get back. <laughs> that was, that was really a-, a You feel like a president? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it, it was just crazy just to like see all these people that I talked to or like seen pictures of just to sort of have them like welcome me to Ethiopia for the first time. And that was like, we'd always like family was a huge part of our, of our like culture back home in Oregon. And to like actually like feel its like presence and have it like be tangible. It, it was really an incredible experience for me. For a personal purpose or for helping out for teaching and everything. Do you have any plan and how, how is it going to look like? So my plan currently is to try to go to Ethiopia at least like once a year. That's great. Uh, currently, we're working on planning Addis Coder 2017, so I'll definitely be back for that. Uh, we, yeah, we're kind of just working. It's pretty early, but we're just sort of working out the details, and that'll be a pretty long process getting that through. But uh, very excited about that, and just uh, really excited to go back and see family and work on Addis Coder again. That's awesome. So, what's your hobby outside of uh, work? Mm -hmm. So, I really enjoy reading. Uh, for me, it's kind of it's a way to sort of escape, and it's kind of for me, it's a way to sign court. Gosh, it's a way to wind down, but also kind of keep your mind sharp at the same time. It's like watching television, but more engaging. I, I really enjoy biographies. Uh, like this year, I read the memoir of Barack Obama, Dreams from My Father, autobiography of Malcolm X, and the biography of Steve Jobs. So awesome. reading about like these really sort of important and like influencing people and sort of trying to learn from their experiences and see like what they've done and try to incorporate different things into my life. That's awesome. That's awesome. So uh, I'm going to give you a closing remark. Uh, uh, so anything you want to say, this is an open question. Uh, you can say whatever. I'm not going to ask you to say what I want you to say and perhaps close it with a little amarinya. <laughs> like, so go ahead. So if you're interested in technology, uh, what I would just say is don't really be afraid to start or to reach out to people 
because that's really the only way to learn anything. And in tech, in computer science specifically, there are so many resources online that if you have access to the internet, and, like you have your, a computer, there's really sort of nothing holding you back. I mean, it, it can be more difficult for some people than others, but if you really have the drive, it's possible. And so I would just say, really sort of follow your passions in that sense and never be afraid to try or fail. Just, just go for it full heartedly because if there's anything that I learned from school or work or just growing up is that it's really, it's really amazing what you can accomplish if you just give it 100% effort. But I'm Mama Saganalo. Uh, if anybody from back home is watching, uh, I hope that you're proud. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, yeah, he said, never be afraid to fail, right? Hey, no, tell you, I'm going to 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 tell you, I'm کردند مات سعی تصفیر کردند، یه تنها گرچه‌ام بزرگ کاتا کم نگرچه، اندک اسما چو لمردات نداشته‌اند چو متصفیر کردند، سامنت برای لا پروگرام هم تبدیل کاتو، هستی تو چاچون دتال مردو، به تاکابلی در سیگنال، به ایمیل، به فیس بوک پیج، یوتیوب لایم یه راچو یا چانل لایال فون پروگرام مکانش را لاتو، سامنت سکمه نگناین چرسمت.